communities. You remember that whenever we have a better call, we want to hand over new functionalities to you that empower uh, you as the users uh, of the ARC, either as a learner or as a facilitator. Now, the slide that I also always show is the ARC concepts. We have seven ARC concepts, an ecological one, a pedagogical one, organizational, neurological, technological, library, and economy. What we share with you today is related to the library, but also to the technological concept. And in terms of technological concept, whenever we talk nowadays about software solutions, we also usually talk about how they can be gamified. And there are three pillars of gamification. And gamification in this sense means that you have a more enjoyable uh, experience. And the three uh, pillars are points, badges, and leaderboards. So especially for a learning platform like the ARC, this is of, of high interest. And today we talk about badges. And on this slide, you see how traditionally innovation excellence, excellence is explained. So you need to have the right time for a good new product, you need to have the right vision, you need to have the right technology, and you need to have the right appeal. And if this goes together, then uh, you might be lucky and have a disruptive product. Today we talk about appeal. And in this slide, uh, I always include also that vision needs to correlate with good values. Because if I have the vision of just getting more money out of others, um, it's probably the wrong values. And technology always relates to the right organization. And that's why we have a decentralized organization on the platform that connects learners, facilitators in communities. So what about the badges? Uh, we have really done a lot of work on badges and you will see them in your own profile in the new setup. Um, Valentin, our designer, uh, did a nice job to present them as a helix. Um, you see a yellow thread. The yellow thread are the age badges. And they are animals. They start uh, in the child age of 1.5. So if you disclose your age, you will always have a spirit animal on your profile. They start with the dragonfly, the otter, the woodpecker, the deer, the goose, the bear. When you become an adult at age 18, it automatically changes into a wolf, 21, bull, 35, eagle. I'm still a sharp eagle, not long anymore. And then I will be an elder. Um, my my gray, uh, grayish hair is... Uh, Pointing this already a bit out. Um, what then I would be a horse and 65 an owl and at 80 a turtle. The peaceful turtle is uh, the highest spirit animal in age badge. We have chosen this approach because it ties into uh, Native American tradition. It ties into the development psychology that as human beings, we just go through similar phases in our life. And uh, we also want to respect, of course, the knowledge of elders uh, on the platform. So if you're interested in this, go into your profile, enter your birth date, and the uh, badge will automatically pop up on your profile. The second uh, kind of badges that we have on the ARC are the learner badges. The learner badges are given on impact points that you get for participating in activities on the ARC. Um, and we chose planets uh, because we are part of, of course, a larger system. And we therefore took the symbols, the astronomical system, symbols of planets. You see them in the red line. Okay, so whenever you learn, you automatically collect impact points and they are automatically transformed into 
uh, badge. Uh, we have Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, uh, Uranus, and Neptune. And the third kind of badges are the badges for facilitation and guiding and mentorship. So whenever you host an event on the ARC, you of course also collect uh, impact points, but it's for facilitation, not for participation. This is the teal uh, line that you see here. And we chose the leaves of trees. Um, so that connecting us to the planet Earth, to our own planet, Mother Earth. And you could say the learner badges are connecting us to Father Heaven. Um, and uh, we have here seven, uh, seven thresholds, the poplar, the Jew, the elm, the fir, the willow, the oak, and the ginkgo. And um, yeah, we have been discussing quite a bit um, how we should set those thresholds. So if you work intensively as a mentor, as a guide for about two, three years, really intensively, you, you might reach the ginkgo. Um, it really shows that you are experienced. Okay, so much uh, for, for badges. Um, I hand over to Lucas. All right. So uh, that was a really nice uh, way to introduce the badges. So let's uh, go straight away into my profile and uh, check out what I got there. So um, since that I'm a strong bull, uh, which means I'm somewhere between uh, 21 and 35. Uh, for my participation, uh, I'm on the Venus level between 300 and 1000. And uh, for facilitation, I'm a mere popular, or at least something. So I hope that uh, you go and check out your badges um, afterwards and uh, see uh, also the, the legend once you tap on them. So what we have today on our uh, plate to um, discover uh, our new parts of the library. So for those of you who have been here last time, uh, on the menu on the left side uh, that you can open on the top left corner on the mobile version, you uh, can see the icon of the library. That's our tool to facilitate knowledge and experience sharing uh, between communities and uh, to promote uh, sharing of best practices um, of events that uh, you believe are worth sharing and worth uh, being organized in other places uh, in order to uh, have bigger impact or whatever you are trying to do uh, to other communities. So in here, you can see all the best practices on, on the platform. And once you enter the best practice, in case you are a facilitator on the platform, you can see it's overview and uh, pedagogical details about how to uh, how to organize it, how, how to facilitate. So this is something that we have uh, seen last time. And uh, if you remember, uh, we were able to create an activity, create a new event out of this uh, library best practice. This time, uh, I would like to show you the other way around. Uh, we will go uh, into an event on the platform and create the best practice out of it. So uh, let's go. I'm going to go into my profile and uh, I'm going to demonstrate today on the activity of uh, the beta community score. So the one that uh, you are currently in. Um, so this is actually following the uh, direction that we believe most of you, in case you are going to share uh, something with others, are going to take. We keep organizing an activity, we, it keeps getting better, and it gets into a stage when we think, okay, now this is something worth to be shared with others on the library. So I have this event with some information, some, some visuals, description, schedule, and other meta information. And all of this will be taken from the event into 
the library best practice and then I can edit it and then I can publish it. So how to do it, I get into the event and I go to the event dashboard, which you might know in case you have already uh, organized uh, an activity on the platform. And uh, in the colorful buttons on the right side, uh, there's a new one on the very bottom, which says uh, create best practice. So let's give it a try. When you click it, you can create a best practice from this activity. And what will happen is that the best practice draft will be created and pre-filled with content of this activity. So you need to select the community in which you want to do that. So most probably it's uh, the one that uh, you are currently in, you, you are organizing the event in. So I'm going to go for the Robin Hood community, which is our meta communities community. Uh, it's very meta. And create the best practice. So, and on the top right corner, I see a best practice was created and saved to draft. And here we go very quickly through the process of designing and creating uh, best practice. There is a setup with some basic information. There is some overview information and detailed information, pedagogical information, and, and uh, how to facilitate. So you are pre-filled there as a designer and the community that you selected as well. You can select whether it is an event or a course and whether this is to be shared publicly or not. So I'm gonna share publicly because I like things to be public. I go to next. And as you can see, things are taken over from the, uh, from the event itself together with the title as well. So of course, um, uh, I'm going to delete the date because now it's becoming a best practice, which means it's not for a specific date. Uh, it's for all ages. And uh, if I have a learning aim, I can enter it in here. So say learning aim is uh, learn about um, uh, news, uh, new things on. Maybe this is not completely correct out of the pedagogical point of view. We can uh, discuss about this later. And of course, description, that's the main part. It's the first thing that people see. Okay, let's go next. On the third page, I select duration, which is automatically calculated from the original event duration. And I can select the learning path so I can see pre-selected appropriate technology. If I'm not sure, I can use this little help icon where I can check out all the learning paths and what uh, what their topic is, what you can learn about. So you should remember here that uh, for one hour of event or activity duration, you are entitled to assign 10 impact points to people. This is the points that they, they use later uh, to, call, uh, to get their badges. And uh, through the learning paths, you are uh, showing or communicating what is the focus of the activity. All right, then the next part, the schedule, which is for the participants. This is to give them an overview of what's, uh, what's happening, what's going to be happening. Uh, then uh, page number four, pedagogy. It's very uh, Montessori inspired. So direct learning objectives, indirect learning objectives, points of interest, and vocabulary. In case that you are not familiar with uh, this uh, terminology, this is another new thing that we have developed. And that's this little eye icon uh, that uh, you can see next to the section names. So once you click on it, uh, you get a context help, which describes you what this concrete thing is about. Um, so right now, they are only on this pedagogy, pedagogy uh, page. And that's one of the things that we would actually like you uh, to communicate with us. We would like you to share with us which parts of the platform were not clear for you, which, in which parts you thought that you might need some help. And there was none. It was just a page. So please let us know through your mentor and uh, we will make sure to add this context help in all the places 
um, where they are necessary. It might be video, it might be text, it might be pictures. We're going to make sure that uh, it's going to be clear. Okay, so let's continue with this best practice. I'm on the step number five. Uh, facilitation schedule is basically the main uh, instruction from the best practice author to the facilitator and should uh, basically be the manual of how to go, how to, how to facilitate this activity. Um, then facilitation equipment, so what kind of things you need. So maybe I add uh, there. <laughs> uh, things for the participants. This is again taken from the event. So participants need ARC account and questions and feedback. Uh, this is shown on the, on the activity page. And behold, another new functionality. We've got uh, file attachments to um, best practices and events from now on. So uh, I prepared two files that I wanted to put here. Uh, one is a PDF for Robin Hood Ninja of unknown content that I'm going to put uh, for the facilitators. The name is pre-filled from, uh, from the file line. And to the participants, I'm going to share the Robin Hood community logo just because I can. Right. And if I click next, it's going to stay in drafts. If I click publish, it's going to get published. And uh, so it's been published, and I've got my first library uh, best practice online. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, this is um, our attempt to make uh, creating best practices more natural because this is how most probably it will be happening. You organize an event and then you want to turn it into a best practice, which is acting again as a kind of template for your for your and other people's future events. But it's not only a template, but it also has a lot of uh, meta information about how to organize, how to uh, make it happen. All right, so uh, this was one direction and um, basically on, on this example, I've shown already all of the things that I wanted to show to you, which is uh, the context help that we have developed and the file uploads. And uh, Knut, would you like to take over and uh, create an event out of a best practice to show, show the other way around? Okay. All right, then I stop sharing and uh, it's your turn. Okay. Yeah, so before I, I share my screen, um, I would like to recap with uh, all of you um, the concept of the library. It's always, I think, important that we take a step back uh, because it is already quite a complex product to understand why we hand over those functionalities to you. Um, we, we started out to create a learning platform that enables us to share important knowledge easier within communities. So the library function is a global commons. And the function that Lucas just showed you is that from the event platform, where you can basically very easy publish events, you can create a best practice and you upload it to a global commons. The global commons, this upload, is really very similar to how we uh, use Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a global commons, no? It's free of charge, it's nonprofit, um, and we can get a lot of information. The thing is on Wikipedia, it's not a filtered information. The ARC uh, filters information for sustainability, for sustainable learning. Um, and it's also organized in a much more pedagogical structure. So whoever thinks that you have good content that you want to share with other communities, you can turn, like Lucas just did it, an event into best practice. What I'm going to show you now is the other way around. So we have the global commons, and I'm looking into this library, and I'm searching for a content that I'm interested in, that I want to facilitate, and I'm downloading it into my community. And um, that's also, for example, why I invited today Ryan 
we're going to have uh, on the 19th of December, we're going to have a screening. Um, so we, we made a small short documentary. This film uh, is already a best practice in the library, which we want to make available to everybody who is interested to screen it decentralized in a local community. And if you are a facilitator on the ARC, this is an important differentiation. The library can only be accessed by facilitators or community mentors, okay? And if you are a facilitator or if you have already your own community on the ARC, you can go into the library, look what is there, download the information and facilitate it decentralized in your local community. And that's what we're gonna do now um, with the film screening. I'm gonna share my screen. So you should be seeing now my profile. Uh, you see in my profile, my interests. Some of you probably haven't uh, edited this yet in the settings. Those are my interests, those are my badges. And here on the left side, we have the event platform, the communities overview, and here the library. Now I click into the library and you see currently there are two best practices, but Lucas is already working on it with the tech team. So we have actually in total more than 20 really nice best practices, which will be shortly available as a gift, as a green steps gift to the community. Um, I'm clicking now into this best practice and you see here all the details. And you see this best practice has been designed here in this community, Green Steps SDP. It has been designed by whom? Very important. We want to give credits to the people who design and share with others. And I click here on create activity. And here it asks me, so where do we want to organize this activity in? And um, I'm picking now Green Steps uh, Soul because Ellen is here. Oh, where is it? Where is Green Steps Soul? You, you are not a facilitator in there. Sorry. Ah, <laughs> good learning. I'm not a facilitator, so I can't do it. Ellen can do it. So let's pick something else. What should I do? Um, I could pick. Um, the forest studios twice here. Yeah, this is interesting. So for, for, the, for the sake of doing uh, it. I want to say that it's twice there because you create one. Can you delete that one? Because uh, I don't know how to delete yours. It's yes, like, it's a good, a good feedback. Um, Lucas, I cannot delete anything. Um, you need to be a platform developer to do anything like that. So Lucas can pick this up. Um, but let's, let's do it like this. Let's say uh, we schedule this event in Green Steps STP. No, not in Green Steps STP, in the Forest Studio. And I say create an activity. And then I have to choose here the facilitator. And I say it's Elan. Elan is the facilitator. And we can say it's public or link only we can enter here uh, contact details. I'm adding a, a phone number. And I go here on next. And the entire menu guides me in a very, very simple way through the facility, uh, through, through the activity. So it really helps me to pre-fill and I can easily edit everything and make it easy to facilitate such an activity. Um, I'm, I'm gonna jump this now and I go directly into preview. And at the end, uh, with, without having edited this now, um, I can view the public page and judge, do I like this, yes or no? So of course he needs to be edited uh, when it's gonna happen, uh, but all this can be edited. Yeah, um, this is how it would look like. And what I show you now is actually an event that I already did before. I go, I created from this best practice, uh, a local event.
which takes place in January. You see here in the overview, learning what matters now, January 13th. And why do I want to show you this event? This best practice has already been created in three languages. The entire best practice is available in Chinese, in English, and in German. And this event on the 13th of January is already being an event in German. If I change here the language, and I go to German, I go to German, I confirm, because for this event, we will invite a German speaking audience. And you see here that the entire event is already in German. And it's not that I edit this. This has been already in the best practice. I only pasted, I only said, create an activity and there it is. It is a tremendous boost to really easily facilitate uh, events. If you create a multilingual best practice, you really help others to get your good content out into the world faster. Okay, it's completely in German. Um, and you see here already the Zoom link, you see what people should bring. And to complete this presentation, I go now to the event um, which happens on the 19th. That's the event that uh, I, for example, invited Ryan to on the 19th. We have the same local event created from this best practice, but it is in English. Because this is an event scheduled from the best practice for an English audience. Okay. So um, I, I stopped sharing. I just wanted to show you with this presentation that this is already very, very powerful. I mean, for me now as a facilitator, uh, I really have a very powerful tool to quickly create good events. Um, and our job would be that we fill the best practice library so that there are more good best practices that can be then facilitated in local communities. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, what is the next? Is the next Q and A already? Yeah, I think the next is the Q and A. Yeah, so uh, that was it. That was it. Then let's jump into it. And by the way, Gloria, maybe while you're not speaking, can you, can you mute yourself because the, the audio is a little a bit dark. I don't have, I'm not joining the audio. Well, you okay. are. Oh, I am? I don't. Okay, so we yeah, it's, have an office muted? speaker. We are using an office speaker. I'm not sure. Is your computer all muted? It's all muted. It's so, yeah, mine is muted. Anyway, it's okay. It's just a little bit strange, but it's still very clear. Cool. Then, yeah, let's, uh, let's go for the Q&A. Yeah, so um, if you see my screen now, you can see the summary of what we shared with you today, age and experience badges, the library 2.0, creative both ways. Uh, Lucas showed you how to create attachments in the library, share facilitation notes, uh, anything you wanna share, uh, the context help. This is what we shared today. And now the Q&A is uh, next. Hey, I want to ask a question. I don't know whether it's a bug or maybe I'm a bit confused about it. Hello? Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so if I create a best practice from an activity and I end up viewing it and on the dash, like on the banner, I still see create activity from the same best practice. How is it going to work like? Is it still going to duplicate the thing? the best practice and create an event out of it. Well, you can create a best practice out of any activity and you can create an activity out of any practice. 
best practice. Of course, uh, if you don't want to get into a loop, then uh, you better stop after a while. But uh, uh, yeah, well, we didn't uh, really uh, uh, restrict this in any way because it doesn't really okay. make much sense. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can definitely do that, like create an activity out of a best practice and then create another best practice out of that activity. Um, you could, theoretically, uh, you're free, <laughs> free to do that. <clears throat> yeah, um, maybe we should pick up this idea. Um, I think it's important that we recall um, that this is a purpose-driven project. We, we have not started in an MVP development stage to think about how people uh, do things differently or um, take the practice of somebody else and make their own practice out of it. I mean, if you have a, a little bit of a moral sense, you wouldn't be doing it, no? So, uh, but maybe later on, we need to think about how to actually uh, avoid this. So let's let's pick it up as a as a development um, step. All right. Uh, uh, any Ryan. more questions, Ryan? Uh, yeah, raise your hand. Please go ahead. Yes. Um, so I'm. I have a question about the um, profile page. Um, I've created my profile and under connected accounts, um, I try to create an adult profile. And it says that when I try to do that, that my email is already registered to another account. And I'm wondering maybe if I'm having technical di difficulties there. Um, or well, I mean um, Ryan, if you create under your profile another connected account, then you need to connect another adult and you need to use a different email address for that person because on your profile, your email is the one that, that counts. And okay. the connected accounts primarily are for children. So they are, they are considered to be actually mainly for children. I mean, I also have my wife as a connected account so that I can register her easier into event but usually it's for kids okay i had um just a, a different understanding but now i understand thank, thank you for right. that thank you for that feedback it's actually you are i, you, I already we already had some people who understood it in this way so definitely this needs to be made more clear and the whole concept is basically uh for two reasons one is for uh being able to book uh, activities for your children and to follow the uh, learning of your children on the platform. Uh, second is that sometimes you want to uh, book an activity for a friend and maybe that friend is not on the platform yet. So then you can create a temporary uh, adult profile and they can then reclaim. Um, but this needs to be made a little bit more clear. Yeah, we don't allow booking without just booking multiple tickets without uh, having the participants on the art because there's still the main purpose of uh, it being a, a learning platform. So that's why all the learning on it, all the participants are uh, uh, tracked uh, or in, in terms of credits. Uh, so yeah, thanks for this feedback. We will uh, uh, make it more clear. And then, yeah, as soon as you log in, you already have an account. And that's it. And unless you want to book for someone else, you don't need to use that uh, connected account uh, functionality. Thank, thank you for that clarification, Lucas. And maybe also um, one other question is, if there were general uh, edits or recommendations that I, I could uh, suggest, who would I, who would I, would this be the platform for that? Or who would I reach out to for that? You mean, you mean uh, suggestions for uh, things that you think uh, should be done differently or on the platform, yeah? Really, at this, at this point, just a simple edit I noticed on the Robinhood community 
the link uh, that is under that community brought me to uh, the Robinhood app. Oh, it's 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 actually it's a it's a fake. Everything in there is fake. This is okay. just <laughs> our, this is our community to have those better calls, and everything that you read in there is of course a joke. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, I understand. I my, my, my it's an Easter egg. <laughs> okay. I actually, never I never clicked that link. Investing for everyone. All right. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Sure. I'm, I better change it to something different. But yeah. But anyway, generally, uh, if you see something that should be improved, then uh, be in touch. Usually, we say be in touch with your with your mentor, with the person who has boarded you to the arc. That would be probably in your case, Knut or directly with me, or there are beta users groups on Telegram and on Matrix where uh, you can uh, put things out for discussion. Okay, okay I get it. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. I'm, go I'm gonna get rid of that link. <laughs> yeah, Ryan, I'm gonna include you afterwards in the um in one of our telegram groups and whenever you have such a, a comment it's super welcome we need this feedback if you think that there is something wrong or we have a typo or any, anything that is in wording not uh, clearly understood or like lucas explained you want to do something with the platform set up an event but there is a terminology not clearly understood then we would add a contact help menu okay great great thank you guys yeah, definitely. This is part. Definitely, this is part of being a beta user to to give the feedback, and that would be awesome. Really, uh, we we need fresh eyes always, right? If you are uh, for a long time in development of a thing, then uh, sometimes things are obvious to you while uh, they are not to to others. All right. Sorry, Khalid, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I wanted to ask um, in creating a best practice library. Are there any principles or guidelines to follow in doing so? Yeah, well, um, I thought that Knut might take this, but uh, yeah, so the guidelines are, are to be contained in the in the context help and the manual video. But uh, other than that, we don't have any uh, like big uh, requirements on on, on this. Uh, in this stage, because of course, right now, all the communities that are participating are beta communities, which means we are actually developing the platform together. So you want to see how people are using the functionality without any uh, guidelines from, from the outside. It uh, all should be possible to be uh, found out or discovered while you're doing it. So that's why we, we made this, uh, this context help, which will be also containing a, a videos manual videos to to take you through the process of, of doing things uh, other than that uh, probably you're asking because you're concerned about quality of the content on uh, on the library once uh, this goes big and uh, there is one concept missing that uh, uh, we are counting on and that is rating so the default rate default uh, sorting on, of things on the platform be it activities, communities, or best practices is going to be through uh, the rating that uh, they have received. So people will be asked to rate after uh, participating in an activity or after uh, facilitating a best practice to rate it, the quality of it. And uh, this way, we want to crowdsource the quality control of all the content on the platform. Uh, Knut, do you want to have a take on this? Uh, Khalid's question was uh, if there is uh, any, if there are any guidelines on uh, uh, creating uh, the best practices in the library. Well, I mean, I, everything that we have designed so far means that the guidelines are uh, incremental. So when you go through the form, you automatically have a sort of guidelines. And like Lucas mentioned before, we we used. Uh, or we strongly uh, used uh, Montessori methodology, but we also used general terminology that use, is used by professional teachers. Um, and that's, that's how we hope that people that are actually not teachers, if they have something that works, 
And we're talking here about experiential education. I mean, this is the entire starting point of the arc, not sitting passively in the classroom, but being outdoors, learning through experience. That's the arc, no? A, activate body and mind. R, restore planet and people. K, know your bioregion. You need to be outdoors mostly to do this. You need to take walks, hikes, and so on and so forth. So this is already setting very much the tone. And uh, of course, from the development side, if you do the coding, um, you don't see this. You need to really get into this, either as a participant or as a designer. And as a designer, you, you will be then also on the library. What the library does in terms of functionalities, um, it offers people who have not gone through a formal teacher training a form that easily turns, I wouldn't even say easily, you need to work on this because if you want to have a good best practice, you need to fill in the content that is required to make it for others, for, for other facilitators possible to really implement your best practice. Um, if you don't provide good information on how to present your activity, your best practice, if you do not provide information, what is the learning aim? What is the vocabulary that people should re uh, learn? Then it will be a very poor best practice and um, you will not get a good rating on that. So the rating is like Lucas said, very central um, for early next year to, to implement it. And also as a, a heads up here, the rating is very much also related to different roles on the arc. If you are a learner, a general learner, then you can rate activities, you can rate communities, you can rate facilitators, but you cannot rate the best practice. To rate the best practice, you need to be at least a facilitator. You need to have experience doing that. So the rating of the best practices is going to be of a higher level. It's going to be more important uh, than the rating of the activities. I wouldn't say more important. I would say it's a different quality. I have a question. Do we still have time for um, an introduction uh, to Elan's project in Berlin? Given the time? Can we Absolutely. Still have Absolutely. Yeah. If you're done here, then this is what we should be doing. Elan, is five yeah, minutes okay? Yeah, five minutes. Uh, but I, actually, I have one question about your website. Go ahead. Yeah, because uh, I just published one uh, event there successfully. So thanks for your guide, um, um, it's helpful. But the thing is, uh, I noticed that um, if I wanna invite people to uh, getting involved this event on this platform, I need them maybe perhaps they need to register on your website, right? On this platform, like what I did. Well, they need it. That to see your event, they don't need to be logged in, but to, to participate, you need to sign in, which means... Yeah, my to... question is, uh, is there a possibility that let people just um, like sharing the, sharing the custom information from other websites, like if somebody having Instagram or they having Twitter account or something like they always use, like it will be easier for people to reach in our platform events. My I see. Well, so far, so far we've got uh, the Google login in there. Google login. Um, yeah, Google is there, right? There, there's the, 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 the red button. But um, um, if they're going to join my event, is it like uh, they don't need to register in the platform or they have to? Well, I mean, so, um, so maybe, I mean, maybe look at my answer to this. Um, Elan, the question is, do you want to use the ARC as a learning platform? If you want to use the ARC just as an event platform, um, then you share the link to the event um, with your people and they register however you want to coordinate this. But since the ARC is a learning platform and mm. it's about learning progress, 
they need to register if there is any learning happening there. That's the entire the entire uh, concept of the arc. Um, if you if you're not interested in this functionality, if you just want to post your events um, like on Meetup, then you better use Meetup. I'm being straightforward here because there are many other event platforms out there. They are not free of charge. Our event platform is free of charge. Um, but there are many others out there uh, where you can have this, this simple functionality, posting an event, inviting people and getting a ticket. This is not what we do here. We have a learning platform and the learning platform requires that people register so that the learning progress um, is actually visible. Mm, okay. But that's maybe will be a limitation for how to get more people involved in this platform. Um, so how, how would it work that uh, you, you gain the uh, points and you basically you sign up for things without having an account? Um, I mean, that uh, you, uh, if there is a way, I mean, uh, let's do it. But uh, after all, it's about building an, uh, a community of learners and facilitators and communities, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, whenever you want to use any service, being a, be a web app or a mobile app, it requires you to sign in. That, that's a standard uh, way to do things, I mm -hmm. suppose. But good to know that we are already have a Google account link. I will yeah, try. yeah, it's it's I Google account it. or or email or GitHub for now. Uh, we can of course uh, add others uh, as uh, yeah because we had to start somewhere. I'm not really a Lucas, Facebook you... fan, but uh, <laughs> probably it's a smart choice. Yes, Knut. I'm sorry for interrupting. What you could also show because Elon is I think having a different starting point here is. Um, <laughs> The function, um, the function of uh, embedding um, the the events on your own website, and we we of course understand that all the decentralized communities have an interest to uh, let people first visit their own website. It's not their interest to let people visit the ARC, um, unless unless you don't have your own website. So what we have as a functionality is that you can embed the events that you create on the ARC in your own website. Mm, that's actually not what I'm asking for. I, uh, I just questioning about this uh, platform connection part. Yeah, so then, then the answer is straightforward. It's a social network. If you don't register on a social network, if you're not interested in the learning, um, uh, focus of the platform, then it's the wrong platform. I mean, there are many, many platforms out there that just have um, the functionality like Meetup, for example, um, mm -hmm. set up an event and do some ticketing or Facebook. You can go to Facebook. Um, many, many solutions on the market. Yeah, but that's also one of my feeling about those or platforms. They are or great in their own circle, but they are not really create something you can join each other together. It's kind of like one, one island, each information island. Um, yeah. I don't know well, whether it's... I can explain clear that. It is. Uh... The, the internet is kind of like this uh, currently, right? So Yeah, I um, feel that's weird because as a user, I feel a kind of trapped in like, um, I don't know why I having this feeling. I just feel I, if I spending a lot of time on Facebook, it's like I live here, but actually sometimes I will need um, the other platform maybe linking or some other thing but they are not really sharing everything like what i did in facebook is not showing there so 
as a kind of like, I need to do the same again, how my life will divide it into so many pieces. Like that's really hard for me as a user to use in those platforms. That's why I actually, I don't spend so much time on any of them. Good choice. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> But I, I'm wishing that one day there will be some sharing community, like everyone do has their own platform circle, but it has no this boundary. Like it should be linking to each other. Mm, yeah, there are, there are some concepts like this. And of course we would also like to discover this uh, later on as a uh, um, uh, <clears throat> social network called Mastodon built on a protocol called activity pub which is a federated network which means you can actually have this kind of information sharing between uh, several uh, services but this is uh, in a very early stage of development and of course mm -hmm. this is um why it's not done by the big companies is because their uh, co data collection is uh, is their business model so uh, they are not really interested in in sharing um mm -hmm. but yeah Thanks for thanks for bring, bringing this up. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, maybe, maybe one more. Can I ask more, Ilan? Oh, sorry. Yeah. One, yeah. One more comment regarding to this. I mean, Ilan has just started or to understand what we do. Um, we, we started out because we want to develop something that is different from LinkedIn and, and Facebook. We want to develop a platform that is a social network, but that really drives sustainability learning. Uh, where we don't get all the time content that we are not interested in. Facebook and LinkedIn is driven by advertisement. I get all the time advertisement uh, about things that I don't need. I get uh, alerts that I don't want. And what Facebook wants us to do is spend more time online. The ARC has been till now designed to spend more time offline with people. It's a completely different starting point. So if you make a decision to use Facebook, you also make a decision to use uh, a profit-driven platform um, where it's about um, you know, financing the platform itself through advertisement. It's really about the decision to understand the business model. Uh, this is a non-profit project that we have here and it has a different vision. Sorry to interrupt, Ellen, you, you were already started. No, you are not interrupt. Um, I, I asking this question because I think on Iowa project, I also having a, a goal need to reach because um, how to finding those people. I think at now I only, the thing I only can do is on, on the internet to find those people. Or, uh, I cannot just go out and putting some bands on the street and find the the people who join my project. So that's also one thing I am concerning right now. It's a bit similar to your platform building. So that, that's why I wanna bring this. Oh, maybe I, I just briefly show my project and we had a little bit discussion about um, Iowa project. I, I think I think Ellen wanted to say something first and then we, if, okay. if okay for sure. us, we can do this, Ellen. Yeah. Um, so my question was, can you introduce your project? What, what type of <laughs> events are you offering? Okay, great. Good start. Uh, I will share my screen with one moment. Uh, we'll stop other screen sharing. Um, Yes, can you see it? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I named this project Iowa because Iowa is the yard I've been living before in Beijing. So it was an artistic uh, zone, art zone in Beijing. So you can see on this image as a kind of living together with nature. This architecture is a kind of uh, transfer form from the greenhouse, but actually it's a kind of design. And uh, I, I've been living there, actually living and working there for seven years. So I've been uh, surely say this kind of design uh, do have some successful part. And what is special in Iowa, it was like an 
Okay, I've been talking. So you can see uh, it's not a single greenhouse. It's a greenhouse um, somehow has having more function. People can live inside and, but you still can grow things inside. And we do had one art community with 50 people uh, four years ago. And the thing is four years ago, it was demolished. So it does exist in the, on the earth for 17 years, I guess. And uh, now it's not exist in the world anymore but uh, it does have a very, very deep memory from all the people who've been there. So those words are I selected from the questionnaire I did this year, four years after it's gone. Like people still remember it and people wrote a lot. I just put a little part here, but you can see what it, it was there like it was a very um, unreal description. Yeah, um, uh, yeah we, we so, can really see a lot of text, so yeah, that's maybe a lot. We can more to pictures. <laughs> so, what's my project is a reunion of this community. Basically, the idea is so uh, myself as a designer, I I study in architecture, so I think I can use my design power at least to um, working on this project to find a way to reunion those spirits. Um, so my plan is to build a visual network, which might be similar to your platform, but it will be in a 3D version, uh, something maybe like a computer game or something. <laughs> for just people in the world, they can get together and we can have a way for communicate or showing our, um, showing our experience, sharing our, what we've been doing, something like that, just communication. And after that, I will make in a studio farm, which will be similar, maybe not a form similar, but will contain the same life in Iowa. So that means we were having our studio there, we were living there, and uh, we still very close to nature. So I, uh, Forest Studio is my studio's name. I will be just working as an imitator. <laughs> Dylan, yeah. I think this goes too much into detail because we have a clear structure here. And I actually also <laughs> told you uh, to, to keep it short. Um, we okay. usually have a one hour call and uh, we have a lot of technical details that are being shared here. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if people got a picture here, um, what uh, is being done. I, I, it's an art project that started in Beijing and is now in Berlin. Um, uh, no, actually um, now is uh, the location selection is in Portugal, the yes, site, the, um, the actual site. So maybe you want to share yes. uh, afterwards some information in, um, in our group, in the, in the Better Communities group, so that people can follow up and also contact mm -hmm. you more in detail. And of course, um, if you have any special requests that we can maybe fulfill uh, on the platform, then uh, let us know um, because you're looking now for a certain part of people. And I think I, I originally thought that you talk about the protocol project. That's what we discussed on Wednesday. Um, mm -hmm. So do you want to make a clear call to action about the protocol project? Uh, actually, no, I think I want to discuss with you guys about uh, how this project should be um, forming. It's like uh, yeah, because... that's out of the scope. That's really out of the scope for our call today because this okay. is a technical call where we share information about uh, the arc. So we would need to schedule a different call for people who are interested, um, and uh, that's definitely interesting. Um, 
And I, I suggest that you um, propose a time in the better community uh, group. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Actually, wants I, to join, I am join. planning to to uh, having the presentation in January in, with city makers. So that will be the officially published of this project. But before I, 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 I think I discussed with you a little bit. I think that's yeah. already helped a lot, actually. Yeah, if then today we don't have time to talk about uh, it. Like this. It's already 1.20, so we are already 20 minutes uh, over time. I think it's mm -hmm. interesting to uh, have a, a peek into a completely different uh, project. Um, I don't know if we need really a departure around today. Um, I'm, I think I'm handing back to Richard to make the official closing. Yes, thank you so much, Nick. Uh, can you, is it okay to... Uh, you can just directly share Richard, it's going to yeah. replace. You can directly share Richard. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. You need to see the last slide. Okay. The answer to the quiz. Okay. okay. Sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah, so thank you so much um, for today, joining us today. Uh, sorry for taking much of your time. Um, I was really impressed with the um, demonstration of the um, um, learning path and the uh, the creating of the community and the impact point. Now I checked my profile, I saw a bull there and I was so happy because I changed it. So um, what we want to entreat you uh, our better users is to uh, like um, Elan and um, Patrick, um, be active beta users, but participate or share information in our um, tele tel uh, Telegram accounts or the element chat or even the WeChat, and then we'll respond to you. And thank you for participating and being part of the active beta users. Now, Giuseppe has a brief, just a five minutes um, sharing, and then we are done for uh, today. Giuseppe, go ahead, please. Yes, please. Uh, actually, I need uh, much less than that. Um, it's, uh, it's just a reminder I'm going to send in the groups that we share and using the email that we usually use to send you an invitation for these calls, uh, a short questionnaire of, it's going to be just 10 uh, questions. Actually, uh, it's, it's really about collecting your feedbacks about, and um, it's connected with what I said at the beginning, it's one year that uh, we run this platform or this year we uh, onboarded uh, several uh, uh, people. Some of them are still with us, some of them left, some of, have, some of them uh, hop on and off. <laughs> but uh, uh, all of you have uh, participated uh, with uh, your, contributed with your uh, active feedbacks to uh, our platform and um, we want to understand what worked well and what worked the less uh, and uh, so please uh, uh, give us the gift of uh, a few minutes of uh, your time and um, uh, respond to this questionnaire that I'm going to uh, to send right after the end of this call thank you everyone